Hi, I'm Joshua Armstrong, and video games have always been one of my favorite pastimes. However, when I find myself looking to play something a little bit more relaxed, I've never really looked further than Stardew Valley or the Pokemon games. That is, however, until this game Moonglow Bay came along, and I started to think to myself, this might be my new favorite cozy game. Hey guys, hold on for a second before we jump into the video. I just want to tell you this one's sponsored by Pella Cases. They're Canadian and compostable. If you want to learn some other fun perks about them, keep watching. Moonglow Bay, published by Coat Sync and developed by Canadian studio Bunny Hug, is a quaint, relaxing, slice of life fishing RPG. The game is set in a small town along the eastern Canadian coastline during the 1980s. As the player, you can choose both you and your partner's pronouns and in-game models based on a few different options the game provides, a detail I think is very welcomed. As a rookie angler and together with your partner, who has a love for sailing, you live out your best lives. That is, however, until your partner mysteriously disappears while sailing one day and is never heard from again. After a time skip of three years, the player character is seen still mourning the loss of their partner as they have been declared deceased due to their absence. Your daughter catches wind of this situation and moves back home to help you out of your depression. She encourages you to get out and try to do things to help yourself and the town by cooking, fishing, and selling meals to the inhabitants. It's at this point that you realize both you and the town's inhabitants have essentially given up on sailing, and by extension, the town itself. There aren't any tourists, and most businesses barely get by. There are trash bags riddled around the coast and the beaches. When you do make it out to the water, there is tons of debris and trash there as well. You eventually go with your daughter to see the mayor of the town, only to find out that he's in the middle of closing up City Hall. After convincing him to not shut down, you are then set off on your main adventure to save the town's economy and love of sailing. In the process, you do start to discover info about mysterious creatures living in the waters. However, I think that the secrets of those discoveries are best kept for when you play the game yourself. While there is an option to use a controller, for a decent chunk of the early portion of this game, I was using a mouse and keyboard, as that is how I prefer to play my games most of the time. When it comes to gameplay, the controls are rather simple. WASD controls your character, the mouse moves the camera and the spacebar, or the C key is your main action button that will change its function between initiating conversation to casting your line and a few other options. If you've played casual games like this before, it's common to find very simple gameplay mechanics like this. Moonglow Bay, however, does change up the formula slightly when it comes to cooking and fishing, two of the main tasks you'll be doing for a lot of this game. While most games simply ask you to find and combine the correct ingredients for crafting or cooking, and maybe play a small animation, Moonglow Bay instead only requires you, for most dishes that is, to have the appropriate fish and enough money to cover the costs of the other ingredients. As long as those two requirements are met, any other ingredients like potatoes will automatically be stocked in your fridge. I personally really liked that I didn't have to run around looking for a bunch of different ingredients and worry about managing a large inventory, and that instead, besides just catching the main fish in question most of the time, the only other thing I needed to worry about was to have enough shells in order to buy any extra ingredients. While cooking, the game will send you into a small series of quick time events where performance dictates the quality of the food you make. This is something that I enjoyed as it gave you something else to do that was more interactive instead of just clicking a series of buttons and waiting for an animation to go off. Another thing I really appreciated about the game is the fact that it allows you to cook multiples of a dish at once. And while you can't cook as many dishes as you want, the game does allow you to cook in multiples of four as long as you have the ingredients. And while that isn't ideal, I definitely prefer that as opposed to just sitting at a workbench and being forced to craft one item at a time over and over and over and and over and over and yes I'm talking about Animal Crossing New Horizons <clears throat> uh anyway all right guys, I've gotta be quick because I've only got a minute, but I wanna tell you about this Canadian case company, Pella Cases. So we like them because they're Canadian and so are we, which we think is pretty cool, but the rest of the world should pay attention because they're biodegradable, compostable, and they feel amazing in your hand. They're made out of this elastopolymer slash flax shiv biodegradable material. You can kind of see it in this like weird marbling sort of speckled pattern. It's, it's got a natural look to it. It kind of reminds me of a robin's egg, not to get too profound here, but it's really great and it just feels awesome. I really just can't stress that enough. 
You can get these cases for all types of phones, for iPads, there's even Apple Watch bands, but I'm using an iPhone 13 case right now, and this one specifically has a little secret inside of it, but I'm gonna have to save that for our next video. So stay tuned to find out, and check out mobilesyrup.com or pellacase.com for even more information on these awesome cases. That's pellacase.com, P-E-L-A, and there'll be a link in the description. See you guys in the next one. I personally felt the fishing experience in Moonglow Bay to be quite refreshing compared to similar games like Stardew Valley and Animal Crossing. While both those games do have some time sensitive mechanics and stress bars, Moonglow Bay instead engages the player to actively fight against the fish once on the hook by reeling it in and pulling in the opposite direction and striking at the right moment to pull the fish in faster at the cost of some potential physical exhaustion. You can also set lobster traps with bait and check them daily as a way to catch different crustaceans or use a net to catch multiple smaller fish at the same time. While this more interactive way of going about the two main mechanics of the game might seem tedious to some who just want to be able to catch all the fish and cook all the food as fast as possible, I for one found it really refreshing actually to be challenged in cooking and fishing and it kept me a little bit more engaged as opposed to just sitting around and waiting for an animation to finish and having the food just be done. I never found myself personally needing to toil away at a task for too long because the way the game is structured, you never really need hundreds of a thing at a time. So it's very easy to just cook a few handfuls of a dish and get going with whatever you were planning to do that day. So what does all this fishing and cooking get you? Well, it gets you shells. And with those shells, you can upgrade your vending machine, get better fishing supplies, as well as donate to the town's infrastructure to help make things better for its inhabitants. You can also donate one of every fish to the aquarium to help boost the town's tourism. While the game lacks much of a trackable progression system besides seeing your list of completed quests, the town does start to slowly change as you help restore it to its former glory, and that's essentially how you can track your progress. While there is a lot to like about Moonglow Bay, no game is without its criticisms, and I do have a few. I found navigating the menus in Moonglow Bay to be a little bit tedious at times, especially at the beginning of my playthrough. Now it could very much be my own fault, as I was swapping between a bunch of games at the time, including things like League of Legends and Lost Ark. However, I did find it weird that sometimes the keys that I was pressing in my opinion, weren't intuitively doing what I thought they would do. While outside the menus, WASD controls movement, you can set your mouse to control the camera. Normally, I would expect to be able to use my mouse to click through the menus. However, you need to navigate within the individual submenus with the WASD keys and swap between the submenus with the J and L keys. While this wasn't a deal breaker in terms of my experience playing the game, it was annoying to have to shift my hands around all the time. I mentioned this small annoyance to a friend of mine and they quickly mentioned that I should probably try playing with a controller. And it's at that point that I realized that once you plug the controller in, the gaming experience, at least in my opinion, became a lot smoother. I think it's because the game was probably produced with controllers in mind as opposed to keyboard and mouse. And once I got used to the controls of a controller, it became a non-issue navigating through menus. The game has a decently sized map that you can explore. However, there is no fast travel options, meaning that if you want to get back to town fast, the best way to do so is to have your boat towed and you have to pay a fee to do that. Meaning if you're low on shells, this might be an issue. While I never personally experienced this, a lot of people online were complaining that they would sometimes glitch out and get stuck behind obstacles. The devs have since put in a help me I'm stuck button which will help you get out of any situation where you might have glitched into something that you weren't meant to. Simply click the button and it will teleport you to the nearest safe space. Like all games, Moonglow Bay has its issues, but for me, most of them are negligible and don't affect the overall gameplay experience. If you're looking for a new cozy game to play between Animal Crossing patches, or are like me and looking for a more relaxing game experience, I definitely recommend taking a look at this game. Its charming art style and touching story of learning to deal with grief and the loss of a loved one make for a great experience. Moonglow Bay is available on Steam, Xbox, and the Epic Game Store. And if you're interested in any other top Canadian games, make sure to check out the roundup that we did somewhere here. <laughs> but also, if cozy games aren't your thing, make sure to check out the other gaming related content we have on the channel. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe as we continue to grow the channel. 
I'm Josh Armstrong with Mobile Syrup, and I hope to see you next time.